Okay, this here is basically a, you know, proof is in the pudding towards the things that we've been telling you about all along that this thing was going to wrap its way completely through the center of Florida after it doing all of its extensive damage either on the west side or the middle of Florida. And of course, here are some statistics in some of your uh, some of your top hurricanes, and this one will be will be part of the top five uh, pertaining to where it hit and how much it hit. And basically, this will probably be one of the most costliest hurricanes because we not only not have to put under, under the perspective of where it hit pertaining to it being a heavy, heavy populated area, but also how much it hit, how much the real estate has went up uh, since, since all these barriers has happened. And also the fact that it's not just going to hit Florida, but it's going to probably do some damage over on the Georgia side. Uh, somewhere around Savannah, Hilton Head, that's going to be uh, that much more costlier. So this storm definitely has a heck of a punch towards possibly being one of the most costliest and being one of the most strongest hurricanes that has hit Florida since 1935. It's one of the top five area if we have that tower cam please right now we're at high tide approaching it in the next hour in the Jacksonville area that water you see there on the right in the middle of your screen that's not a pond or a lake that's not supposed to be there that is the ocean surge that is coming in it, it looks like it's knocked down the dunes it's very very ugly very ugly in regard to there's, there's a stay away order through the courts against me um, based on the allegations and the charges against me um, there is a restriction Sorry about that. For calm. And this disaster, unfortunately, while the media may move away from this disaster in a few weeks, uh, unfortunately, the, the, the good people at FEMA and the good people working with Florida Division of Emergency Management and the local emergency managers are going to be dealing with this for many years to come. And the, the importance of the disaster declarations is not only to free up resources from the federal government down through. Anyways, what you were seeing a while ago before I hit the wrong daggone button. Sorry about that is that as that hurricane, which is now a tropical storm, but may actually become a hurricane one before it makes landfall again, is hitting just at the right time pertaining to the high tides coming in that will basically flood that right around where the, where the, uh, naval, uh, where the naval base is on the opposite side of the bay there. And that water is already pushing into the city limits of Jacksonville. I'm very familiar with Jacksonville. I've lived in Florida three or four different times, been in and out of Florida over a dozen. Okay. So I'm very, very familiar with the, uh, I don't forgot now, what is that? Um, McDobbin, uh, Dobbin County or something like that. Anyways, basically their city limits to that county goes from basically to city limits to city limits in regards towards it being one of the biggest counties in the United States because of the way that they annexed it, annexed it out. But the point that I'm trying to make is this. It's going to hit in swelling tides. It's going to cause substantial flooding. Probably not near as bad as... Orlando or Daytona, but then as it gets closer up towards the Outer Banks up there by Georgia, up towards Hilton Head, in which I was in Hilton Head whenever that hurricane hit, uh, when was that? Two, seemed like that was in 204, 205. That uh, there was a, a hurricane that hit up there through towards Hilton Head and tore up a, bu a bunch of those rich houses up there. But it looks like it's going to go right back up towards that coastlining area 
and reformigate itself to at least a Hurricane 1 status, and it's going to impenetrate now the East Coast areas where it has recently hit the West Coast of Florida. So this thing ain't, ain't through with yet. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the, probably the biggest part of the damages have already done been been seen, and it's going to be uh, well over fifty billion dollar storm. Billion. Well over a fifty billion dollar storm. Unbelievable. And our special coverage will continue. Meantime, I'm Becky Anderson in Abu Dhabi with a quick look at other stories making news around the world. And the Kremlin says that President Vladimir Putin will attend a ceremony on Friday to annex occupied Ukrainian territories into Russia. Russia's two houses of parliament will consider the annexation next week, according to Russia's state news agency. This after the so-called referenda in four occupied regions of Ukraine. The West has denounced the vote as an illegal sham. Our Nick Robertson, following the very latest developments, he joins us now from London. Nick. Yeah, there's a couple of takeaways from the sort of speed of uh, Russia and President Putin's action here, Becky. One of them, quite simply, that referenda, the sham referenda, only got underway this time last week. Yet already they're being rubber stamped in the Duma of President Putin about to sort of take another step in formalizing their annexation to become part of Russia. Why the speed? His losing territory inside Ukraine. He needs to try to cement a victory. Why make this a big ceremony? Because he needs to signal to the Russian people that he's achieved his goal, what he calls a special military operation, an unwarranted invasion of, of Ukraine, is how the West sees it, um, that he has something to take home from this. He said he was going to secure Luhansk and Donetsk. He's trying to make that claim with, with the the proceedings in the Duma, um, but a sham not to be respected internationally. That's the outside view. Mm. Nick Robertson's in London for you folks. Thank you. Meanwhile, Russians by the thousands continue to try and flee the country to avoid getting drafted into military service. They've been packing roads that head to the borders of neighboring countries. Melissa Bell reports from a very busy border crossing in Georgia. Here on the Georgian-Russian border, they continue to cross, uh, not just on foot and on bicycles, but in their cars as well. And what those who arrive in their cars tell us is that they have been for four or five days in that huge line of traffic yes, on the other side of the border. What they all explain is that they left as quickly as they heard about that draft uh, announcement last Wednesday for 300,000 fighting age men. What they tell us also, the fighting age men, but also the families coming over, is that their fear was that that draft order might be extended and that border crossings like this one could become even harder to cross still. Melissa Valsianen on the Georgian-Russian border. Well, the Swedish Coast Guard says it's confirmed a fourth leak in the Nord Stream pipeline that suffered unexplained explosions earlier this week. The cause? Still unclear. But three sources tell CNN that European security officials say Russian Navy support ships were spotted in that part of the Baltic Sea on Monday and on Tuesday. Experts fear the amount of greenhouse gases being released as a result of these leaks could be unprecedented. Well, British Prime Minister Liz Truss defending her controversial tax. So in other words, they've sabotaged their natural gas going over into that area. All those people are leaving Russia because they know that it's all a bunch of BS. And now Russia has done this annexing thing towards trying to validate the property that he was trying to obtain. That way he can at least wave it in front of his beloved brainwashed left their citizens in saying well we've already obtained this and we've had a vote on it and this is now rightfully ours so what we're seeing here is a pattern of desperateness on levels that i really don't think 
that we have seen uh, the last bit like yet pertaining to what this guy is actually willing to do in trying to validate that in which what he has already done been a part of. We're going to go back here now to this particular uh, area of the storm. Please listen. When we make mistakes, I think it was um, an honest mistake. I think it would have been, the White House would have been better served if they just said, you know what, that was a mistake on the president. Let's move on. Uh, next question. What causes them to change their schedule, though? Because, I mean, I, I said the woman had a hard job. She does. So KJP, Karine uh, Jean-Pierre, says, or Pierre, said, the team has no changes in mind for the president's schedule. At 7 o'clock Eastern last night, let me tell you what was going on. Well, we all know. Hurricane Ian was whipping 155 mile an hour winds on southwest Florida. Biden went to the Democratic Governors Association in D.C., a Democratic fundraiser. Jose, would you try to change the president's schedule at that time? Well, I mean, he's able he's able to do two things at the same time. Right? So he's what was he doing while he was there? He was raising money for the Democrats. He's been in con you know he's been in close contact with Juan DeSantis every single day. He called him the day uh, Hurricane I in uh, made landfall in Florida. So he's he's been take he's been on top of this since since day one. But him taking an hour out of his schedule to go to a fundraising does not make him uh, incapable of, of leading uh, the situation. Uh, all right, so you had, you had a visual optic and from last night, and you had that. No, but what it does do, it speaks volumes about his incompetency towards taking this serious in the regards towards how many lives are being affected on account of this hurricane that has devastated uh, billions and billions of dollars worth of real estate. That's what it does, because it's basically terrifying uh, a, a terrifying moment for so many hundreds of thousands of people that now their lives has been totally turned upside down. That's what it does. Curajula. His family owns multiple restaurants in the area, including Owen's Fish Camp in Sarasota. Hey, Mark, thanks for being with us. How did your restaurants do? You know, remarkably well. Uh, downtown Sarasota, we seem to be a little insulated here. I mean, lots of debris. See my crew is cleaning up right now as we speak. Um, potentially we'll get open tomorrow night. Um, honestly, our thoughts and prayers are just with the people south of us. I mean, some serious devastation uh, down there. It's hard to be uh, feel good up here about, uh, you know, being kind of uh, missed again. Sarasota seems historically to take, you know, we, we, always, we always get missed. You know, we go north, they go south, but we're just thinking about the the people down south hearing some horrible stories uh, down there and hoping for the best. Yeah, Mark, I mean, I'm just thinking of, you know, the areas around in Sarasota that are so low-lying. I'm thinking of Longboat Key, you know, even I'll just go down a little bit to Siesta Key. I mean, it's, it's places that are so fragile, and yet they, they held up. Uh, how is the power situation in, in Sarasota, and, and, and how do you see it going forward? Yeah, so I know I'm hearing a couple hundred thousand people are out of power right now. Um, downtown, uh, it's hit or miss. I think we have power here. It comes and goes. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just a crapshoot, you know. Um, my house is out of power, you know. Yeah. But, um, you know, we'll push ahead. We've done this before. Um, we're just grateful again that, um, you know, we, we didn't get the, uh, the yeah. serious damage here. So, you know. And that, like, unfortunately, again, so many people did just south, south of us. Yeah. Yeah, it could have been. Mark, you know, no, thank you very much for being with us. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate Thanks. it. That wraps up the hour for me. You can always reach me on Twitter and Instagram at JD Ballard. Be sure to follow the show at JD Ballard MSNBC. Thank you for the privilege of your time. Andrew Mitchell picks up our coverage next. President Biden has now signed the Inflation Reduction Act into law. Okay, so what exactly does it mean for you? Out-of-pocket costs for drugs will be capped. For seniors, insulin will be just $35. Families will save $2,400 on health care premiums. Energy costs down an average of $1,800 a year for families. And it's paid for by making the biggest corporations pay what they owe. President Biden's bill doesn't fix everything, but it will save your family money. The 10th pick is in, the new All-American Club. That's a...
Saturday on CNN. Advancement. And also a strong northeasterly wind, Tony Lawback reporting from Jacksonville Beach, showing you the wind. Look at all the green boxes here. These are flash flood warnings, and I promise you this, those flash flood warnings are going to be extended north to Palm Coast and Jacksonville as we go through the afternoon hours. Watch the radar here. Now, the structure of Ian is going to change. Now, most of the rain is going to be on the northwest side. The exception to that statement are these feeder bands coming in to the coast. By the way, these feeder bands that you're looking at, they also not only produce rain, but isolated tornadoes through the night. We continue to track the progress of Ian as it uh, continues to the best. Why is everyone talking about navage and nasal irrigation? See what I was, see what I was saying about the uh, about it going up, uh, hitting basically Jacksonville. Just about navage just about the same sun. time that that hurricane's going to be there, which is just going to intensify <laughs> that <laughs> that surge. <laughs> hacer una recogida en su casa y llevarlo al lugar donde necesitan ir. Tenemos tres, tres de esos albergues. Es mejor de esa manera porque así sabemos cuáles son sus necesidades y estamos preparados para recibirlo. En esas situaciones estamos ofreciendo servicios de... So basically now what they're going to have to worry about is more so of coastline flooding than they are, I believe, in in all-time rainfalls pertaining to deluges uh, in which there will be some areas that will still get flooded because of the deluges coming from the initial storm. But the coastline in areas is going to take on a beating right now for now, probably until uh, evening's in because it's all coming in at that same time during that high tide that's going to make it that much more worse for your low-lying areas uh, in that perspective about how you will access the services if, if you have a problem at your home. Uh, Ann Torres is the director of our utilities department. I've heard so, uh, so many people just within the past 12 to 14 hours before this thing actually come roaring in along about 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Um saying that they had overplayed the storm. Well, if you look at the damages towards all the flooding over on the west side and up towards the center, you'll realize real quick, hey, they didn't overestimate this. If anything, they estimate, underestimated it. All across Central Florida are telling people to stay indoors for just a little while longer, and we've got our crews scattered all over the viewing area to help you prepare. We are entering our 56th hour of coverage, showing you the damage and the rescues happening in your neighborhood. What is now Tropical Storm Ian has now moved off our shore, but we are still feeling the impact. Yeah, we want to get right to uh, first warning meteorologist Kelly and class and Eric Burst, who are tracking the latest with this storm system. Yeah, so let's just talk about what's happening right now, okay? So we're under still flash flood warnings because flooding is ongoing. We saw the video there from Kissimmee, and it's still pouring down. And in addition to that, may I just add that the winds are still significantly gusting. Now, we'll talk more about the winds here in just a little bit, but there are the flash flood warnings. At this point, the National Weather Service has dropped the flash flood emergencies, okay? So we've got a flash flood warning for a COE up through... Okay, you see their, their uh, thing right there uh, off from Highway 4 um, called D-Land? little town there called D-Land. When I was up there in 2006, it was somewhere right around December time, a tornado uh, come down right there and basically killed about 30 people. So whenever they say that this area up here in Northwest Tennessee and over towards Missouri and even parts of Oklahoma is nothing but a tornado alley, uh, for some reason, whenever a tornado hits down in that area in the summertime, I mean, in the dead winter time, it really don't get a whole lot of coverage. And believe it or not, it just tore that town, that area of that town, all to pieces. I went in there with chainsaws and helped them clean up the area. And that's whenever I went across Highway 4 and discovered a little area called Casadata, Florida, just on the other side of the interstate there, that uh, I found to be very, very unattractive. 
uh, because of sorcery type practicing that they was involved in. I just thought that I would throw that in, in addition to the flooding and stuff that you're seeing right there. Uh, this is probably going to be like the remnants of that in which what had already done went through. Um, I don't know if Mickey Mouse or Orlando, I don't know if it got totally flooded or partially flooded. I'm pretty sure all those areas got, got drenched real, real well. I don't know how much damage that they have obtained, but some of these areas has really, really intensified. In a, Koei, in a great deal of damage that they have recently received. I mean, it's just been unbelievable of the amount of rain, the water that has... And look at the center of circulation. Of it's already just off the shoreline here of Brevard County, and it will be getting stronger. But as it moves out and still dumps rain on us, we have already had so much fall. Here's meteorologist Kellyanne Class with some of those rainfall totals. Yeah, and we've been looking through uh, the, the products that National Weather Service has been putting out, the official totals by them, by all of their observers that they reach out to. And uh, let's start in Seminole County, where they reached in Lake Mary 16.14 inches of rainfall. So over a foot of rain in Oviedo, it's 15.13 inches. Winter Springs, over 15 inches. Oviedo, uh, Chuliota, right around 14 inches of rainfall. Longwood at about 12 inches, so just above a foot of rainfall. Going into Osceola County, Campbell at about 15.65 inches of rainfall. Pine Grove, almost at 13 inches of rain. St. Cloud, almost at a foot of rain. We're talking about high rain totals, totals a foot or even higher, which is why we're still going to be concerned about flooding, especially with all the rainfall from Ian. So this is today's flood threat, so it's on top of the additional flooding that we're already seeing. It's possible still in Seminole County and Southern Volusia County, but you go into Northern Volusia County and into especially coastal Flagler County, it's likely to expect it as Ian continues to move across the area. Some locations in Volusia County could see as high as 10 inches of additional rainfall in Seminole County up towards central Volusia County, talking about an additional three to five inches of precipitation. So we all want to know where is the worst of the weather going to end? Well, it's going to start off ending in our east or western locations and move from west to east. Here's a look at three o'clock. The heaviest stuff is now beginning to push towards the I-95 corridor and clear out from our central and western spots. But as we go throughout the day, throughout the evening, we're still going to see that wraparound moisture. So we're still talking about heavier rainfall up and down the I-95 corridor sitting and spinning for quite some time all the way through the late night hours. We do think by around three o'clock in the morning and then through tomorrow afternoon conditions will really begin to improve up towards our north. So what you need to know is still expect rainfall and those gusty winds. We'll come back in a few minutes and talk much more about the other counties that received high rainfall totals coming up in a few minutes. All right, uh, just another reminder for all of us that uh, this is still uh, something to contend with and to Well, thanks again for watching. Good luck to all of us. Maybe 80% of the storm's damage is done, but uh, we still got that other 20% to go in the Carolinas. Bill, Karen, thank you so much for that. And of course, we have to worry about those barrier islands around you know, yes. Georgia and South Carolina as well off the coast. NBC's Blaine Alexander has been dealing with the worst of the tropical storm. Today in Orlando, Florida, Blaine, just how has it been there? Well, Andrea, the good news, I'll start with that, is that the wind gusts that we had seen for the best part of this morning that really at some point had kind of knocked me off of my footing, that seems to have calmed down a bit. So it doesn't seem that the wind is the biggest issue. But as you heard Bill mention, the rain. The rain is the biggest issue across the board, and that's certainly no exception here in Orlando. In fact, as the sun is coming up and as we're getting further into the day, we are seeing that really come to bear. We're getting right now a briefing from the mayor of Orange County. He's speaking right now and giving us an update. He says that there are about 1,500 people countywide that have had to evacuate their homes and make it to emergency shelters that have been set up in schools in different areas across the county. Uh, there are also a number of rescues. It seems that almost every hour we're getting more and more reports of rescues that have taken place. I spoke with an official from Orange County Fire and Rescue, and she says that they focused a lot of their energy this morning on evacuating a nearby nursing home. She said there are more than 100 residents there who had 
to be carried out almost one by one and taken to safety. We saw these unbelievable pictures of water pouring into this nursing home as officials were trying to wheel some of them out and get them to safety. And at last check, she said that that is still ongoing right now, though they're wrapping up. So, Andrea, just to give you a sense, you know, we've seen rain. We've been out here for the better part of the morning since about 5 o'clock. We've seen rain nonstop, varying degrees of intensity, but it has not stopped. And that's really what officials are concerned about. Already, we've seen more than a foot of rain across parts of Orlando. Keep in mind, though, that's more than double the amount of rain that this area typically sees in an entire month. So we're talking. So there you go. So the damage is substantial, even in the middle of of the state uh, around Orlando, the Orlando area, uh, pertaining to pertaining to uh, it being basically catastrophic, and and if it wasn't catastrophic pertaining to the winds, it was catastrophic pertaining to the flooding. Either or, it's going to be a very 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 costly storm. That, like the commentator said a while ago, uh, they may have seen about 80 85 percent of its damaging. Uh, effects, but there's still yet more to come. So, yeah, talk to us about how it is today. So we're in a, we're across the road. So the, the Gulf of Mexico is over there, and I showed you cars that were flowing sort of inland uh, into uh, you know into where land is. Now this is across the road. It's a very similar roadway to the one that I was at yesterday. It's a parking lot for for an apartment complex. And here, what happened is cars uh, went this way, but this is an actual waterway behind it. So uh, we have some people here who saw the cars floating in. One went right over. And is, uh, as I like to say, swimming with the fishes. And these two cars didn't. So take a look at this pickup truck, this Ford uh, F-150. Uh, hard to see, but the the left tire of this car, right here, if you see that, the left tire of this car is over the edge of the pier. Um, so that's, that's one example. And then right behind us, we have this uh, Ford Exposition, which... Uh, so we want to say thank you again for watching and listening. Good luck to all of us as we end this particular program of the devastation of Ion that has uh, affected so many, so many thousands of lives, and good luck to all of us. Shalom.